The next one we have is the CMYK. And this one stands for cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And it's best for print. So when you're printing out like a photo or you're printing out like a brochure or a menu for someone that's supposed to be perfect, look nice and professional. The next one we have is the uh, lab color. So it stands for luminosity and then A and B channels. And um, I'll go into channels a little bit more later, but um, this is the best for correcting images. And it puts grayscale information in the luminosity channel. And then the A and B channels have your color information. So when <clears throat> you're working with an image, I keep on talking about channels. When you're working with an image, it has these different channels that have the different color information, different shades of that color in that channel. When you take all the channels and put them all together, it'll create images with uh, the kind of color that you'll normally see, like a regular color. So let me see if I can uh, bring that up for you guys. So if I come over here to on the right where our panels are, there's a panel called channels. Now, if I turn off, let's see if I can get this to work. Now, this, the the channels on on this seem to be uh, in the uh, black and white, and then this is all of them combined. So they've just got the uh, black and white colors here, but this is the information of the green and blue. And um, if we combine two of them, then we're going to get a green and a blue color. Now, um, Photoshop puts these into black and white just so it's easier to see and uh, easier to see what's going on in these images. So let's, I'm going to go back up and open this back up again real quick and uh, go over resolution a little bit. <clears throat> so in the, uh, the resolution is the amount of pixels you can fit into what you're viewing so the resolution of a typical monitor is 1024 by 768 and um, that equals out if you multiply that out it mo comes out to around 786,000 pixels on the screen so that's how you figure out how many pixels per inch are in your um, in your screen. Now the higher amount of resolution you have the better color and uh, quality of color that you're going to get. And it's going to be uh, nicer and like less blocky and everything like that. So I wanted to go over the uh, different types of resolutions that you that you uh, want to use. It allows you to type these in if you want but these are the main ones that you should use. Use 72 pixels per inch if you're making like web pages, CDs or DVDs, and other video. Um, use 150 if you're like printing things on like an inkjet printer. Use 200, like these are at home, at home printers. Use 200 pixels per inch if you're using a photo printer and then finally use 300 uh, pixels per inch if you're going to um, do some commercial printing so if you have a photo business and you're taking pictures of someone and selling them you want to get the uh, have your resolution at 300 pixels per inch and that's going to be the most color value that you'll get now if we go ahead and uh, check out some of these presets you'll see that they'll um, have some of these already on there for you. So if I, if I go to web, we're gonna have a width and a height that they just came up with. And then the resolution was 72. And remember I just said that's what, it, what, that's what it should be if you're working with web. And the color mode was RGB, like I uh, said before that it should be. Now if I come down to photo, we're going to see that the resolution is now 300 and uh, we should change this to CMYK and uh, that'll um, 
be, well, CMYK will be for commercial printing. RGB will be just for like regular uh, printing. So those are, these are just the, uh, here's a mobile device. I mean, these are just the, the uh, a couple presets. But most of the time when I'm working, I don't use the preset and I just go to, I just type in my custom values that I got from my client that I was working with. So I think that's a good time to uh, stop at this uh, tutorial. Um, the main thing I wanted to get through to you was that you have to pre-plan when you're about to make a new Photoshop document. Um, you want to remember, you want to know what is going on ahead of time so you don't have to redo it later in, t uh, in time. So all the work that you did, you don't want it to be off for nothing. So um, that's pretty much what I wanted to get through to you. Um, thanks a lot for watching this tutorial. Thumbs up if you liked and thumbs down if you didn't like it. I know it was a lot of information and uh, not a whole lot of action, but sometimes you got to get through the, uh, you got to grind through the the uh, basics and all that stuff until you, and then you can start making some cool stuff. So that's just how it goes in life, I guess. So thanks for watching, everybody, and see you next time.